Hello world, a Russian hacker wanted by the FBI has just been, well, hacked. And evidence points to this guy being the leader of Fancy Bear, the notorious Russian state-sponsored elite hacking group. Sergei Alexandrovich Morgachev has been wanted by the FBI for years. Charged with election interference, identity theft, and money laundering, he's long been thought to be involved in some way or another with Russian state-sponsored hackers. This made him a prime target of the Ukrainian hacktivist group Cyber Resistance. Like other hacktivists on both sides of this conflict, these guys live on Telegram, though they claim to cooperate with various power structures of Ukraine. In other words, they're state-sponsored themselves. And on April 10th, they claimed to have hacked this guy and not only linked him to Russian state hackers, but identified him as the leader of hacker group APT28, a group better known by the name Fancy Bear. A pretty explosive allegation. I mean, whenever we hear about Russian state hackers, the name of Fancy Bear usually comes up. They have the longest Wikipedia page of any state-sponsored hacking group and are thought to be behind a whole array of cyber attacks spanning over a decade. But what's the actual evidence for this guy being the mastermind behind much of this? Well, a complete ownage of his email accounts revealed quite a bit. His address, passport scans, driver's license scans, and so on. There's, there's a lot here. But most interesting is a form he filled out in order to receive Russian security clearance. And according to section four of this document, which is about previous employment, up until August of last year, he was the head of department in military unit 26165 which is the official name within the Russian intelligence service for Fancy Bear. So what happens now? What are the ramifications of this hack? Well, apart from extreme levels of embarrassment and his employer not being too happy because this leak was incredibly bad for him, I can't show much of what was leaked because, well, YouTube police, but there's even his medical certificates, the car he drives, his CV, and the hackers even found the notification email he received from Apple that the FBI had subpoenaed his entire iCloud account. But regardless, the guy was already wanted by the FBI. This leak might make him more wanted, I suppose, but so long as he doesn't step foot outside of Russia, he's safe. Though the Ukrainian hacktivists didn't let that stop them from getting their own back. The breach of his email account gave them access to his AliExpress account, through which they placed large orders for FBI memorabilia and adult toys, paid for with his card to be sent to his home address. And it's not the first time cyber resistance have abused AliExpress accounts. A few weeks ago, they gained access to the account of Mikhail Luchin, a drone operator on the Russian side in the war. He's often described as a war influencer because he documents his operations on Russian social media. Mikhail recently raised $25,000 in a crowdfunding campaign to be spent on consumer drones for the Russian military, the kinds that have proven pivotal on both sides in the conflict. However, after breaching his AliExpress account, cyber resistance repurposed the entirety of the $25,000, again, spending it on a wide variety of adult toys. For fear of being smitten by the YouTube police, I can't go into much detail on that, but use your imagination. There's no public details at all on how these two were hacked, but after all, cyber resistance isn't a research group. It's a state-backed threat group engaged in a hybrid war. There's also been a bit of news on the Russian side of all of this. In the last few days, Killnet, the pro-Russian hacktivist collective, broke from their usual modus operandi of DDoS attacks and instead leaked a bunch of NATO documents which seem to have come from a protected web portal. However, don't get too excited. After checking several of the documents myself, almost all of this stuff is available from public sources anyway. There's nothing classified here. Killnet seemingly gained access through a compromised set of credentials. There's also been some drama brewing within the Russian hacktivist community. A few days ago, the leader of Anonymous Russia, a guy going by Ratty, was arrested in Belarus on unknown charges. Anonymous Russia is a pro-Russian group, which like Killnet is primarily known for DDoSing anti-Russian organizations. One of their recent targets was the UK's MI5 website. Like I say, we don't know what prompted his arrest, because of course, Belarus is aligned with Russia in the war and Ratty was on their side. So there's obviously more going on here behind the scenes. However, in a turn of events that was even more confusing, immediately after his arrest, the leader of Killnet, Kill Milk, posted to his Telegram channel that he had made a difficult joint decision with the Killnet collective team to Dianon one of his apparent comrades. Essentially, he doxed Ratty, revealing him to be one Arseny Yelisiu, probably butchered that one. But why he did this to someone apparently on his side, we don't know. All Kill Milk said was Arseny, founder of Anonymous Russia, is a great guy and a patriot, but he was not careful. Now he is paying for it with his community and status. 
I think it's fair to say the two likely just didn't get on. And in an attempt to consolidate power within the Russian hacktivist sphere, Kilmilk took it upon himself to appoint a new leader of Anonymous Russia. But to give you more context here, I should point out that if you spend some time in the Killnet Telegram channel, you'll find it's often used to advertise for paid courses. So it's quite clear that Killnet isn't all about the hacktivism. Their money-making ventures might have had some part to play in all of this drama. This video was made possible by Altium Designer, the world's number one PCB design software. 35 years of innovation and development has gone into this bit of kit and it really shows. Nothing else I've used comes close to the sheer breadth and depth of features. If you dabble in PCB design at all, you have to give this a go. The routing engine even just in of itself is sublime. Grab your free trial via the link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.